Hello, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. Welcome back to my garden in zone 8B in Portland, Oregon. You can see my house here, the cattle panel arch that is on the path down to where I am standing by the duck house, which is whoa, right there. I can tell that spring is a little bit delayed. My apples are in full bloom today and that's a little bit later than normal. And this is the gate into this section of the poultry run. And you can see here my Clematis Montana or if you're British or pronounce it properly, you will say clematis, but I was raised saying clematis. <sighs> My neighbors are cutting down a tree, chainsaw noise. Um, this is normally in full bloom this time of year, so it's a little bit delayed. In fact, it's probably about a week and a half late, but soon this will just be a gorgeous bower of beautiful flowers leading into this part of the garden. Let's give that chainsaw a second. Okay, so it's early in the season, it's early May, my poultry do quite a bit of free ranging. So they have a three paddock rotational system. And usually that provides them with a lot of greens that they kind of forage for on their own. Greens, seeds, scrubs, because they are moving from a section that has been kind of really stripped bare into a new section that has been allowed to rest for quite a while. But this time of year, all parts of the garden have either been worked really heavily or are just coming out of winter. And so what we're seeing is that there are not as many greens as there should be in the poultry run. The area I have them in now, they have worked over really hard the last few weeks and I'm not ready to put them back over here yet. And I'll show you why in a moment. So I have a couple of strategies for how I add greens to my poultry's diet this time of year. Um, I wanna make sure that they can forage on their own, but sometimes it works best for me to add in a little extra that I need to do, just a few minutes a day where I can go around and um, be able to kind of forest and harvest those greens that I can throw into this part of the chicken run until I can get them moved over here. So let me show you what I'm doing. Here's the first thing, hang on a second. So you can see this area that they're in now has basically nothing growing. They've stripped all of the good little sprouting greens. And that means this time of year, I need to provide them with snacks because I don't want to let them loose out here in the garden. There's not a lot going on in these beds, but there are things that are germinating and they will destroy them. So I want to make sure my birds get lots of greens early in the year. There is not going to be much for them to forage on their own in areas that are safe for them. So I'm going to show you what I do. One of the first things I do is I have patches of perennial greens around the garden that are specifically for chickens. This right here, French sorrel, great spring green. I have a patch for us, I have a patch for the chickens. And ducks, let's not forget them. To the front yard and get some more. I've heard folks mention that they feed their rhubarb leaves to their chickens. Chickens don't eat them and they're probably too high in oxalic acid to be good for them. So no, I use my rhubarb leaves as mulch. This right here is lovage. Uh, I enjoy eating it. It's like a very strong perennial celery, but I have found the chickens will only eat the greens if there's nothing else. I think they're probably a little strong flavored for them. They are edible for chickens though. Okay, so first off, we have my neighbor's parking strip. So my yard, neighbor's yard, neighbor's driveway. Um, I come and forage for grass here and dandelions. So all of this I can pick, especially where it's starting to creep over onto my side. Grass is not the most nutritious thing for chickens, so I wanna make sure it's not the only green that they're getting, but it's a good supplement. My neighbors behind me used to spray quite a bit of Roundup, and one of my kids, I think it was probably Ruth, went and talked to them and said, hey, could you please not spray Roundup right on this strip? And so they have stopped. So now I feel okay feeding this to my birds. So now we're up in the front yard and you can see kind of a hodgepodge mess of projects. I'm gonna grab a little container here. I 
And this is where I end up doing quite a bit of foraging uh, for the chickens this time of year. This bed is kind of being left fallow. I'm actually thinking about taking out this bed and creating a seating area here for our family to utilize the front yard better. You can see where we took out a tree and then you can see a gajillion dandelions. You can also see I let radishes freely self-sow. This blackberry out of the way that fell down and I haven't strung up yet. Lots of radishes so I can pick those radish greens. Some for us, but some for the birds. Here we go, we're gonna get those dandelions. We're gonna get some bread straw, also called cleavers. This is medicinal for humans as well. It's a native here. Okay, I've got my bucket here with all my goodies. It takes about five minutes, a couple times a day. This time of year when there is not a lot of forage in the rotational paddocks for the birds, this is a way that I can quickly weed and add some extra greens to their diet. Let's go feed it to them. Hey you guys! Hello ladies! Oh, I hear happy noises. I'm coming. Okay. Okay, they're pretty happy. Pretty happy with that. So that's my first strategy for providing extra greens for them this time of year. Okay, gosh, it's so nice out. Let's go up here and get the second thing that I do. Actually, I don't know if anybody else is like this, but I, when I'm going through my seeds every year, my box of seeds, I tend to find ones that are really old that I either never planted, someone gifted me and they were already really expired, um, or I only planted half the packet, or maybe like I didn't like that variety that much and I didn't want to plant more of it the next year. So I always have a collection some of these are like 12 years old and first of all expiration dates for seeds are you know don't 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 listen to that properly stored seeds can last a really long time now some seeds like carrots start to lose, lose their vitality after one to two years but some seeds i've planted beet seeds that were donated to me that were uh over a decade old and i had like 90 percent germination from them so and i think they were stored in somebody's shed before i got them so I have all of these expired old, old seeds and some of them were gifted to me and some of them were ones that I bought. You know, it's like broccoli and mustard greens and cabbage. And what I do is I go into a part of the poultry run where the poultry are prohibited from entering that zone and will still be locked out for several more weeks. And I broadcast all of my old seeds in there. Whatever germinates and whatever grows those girls are allowed to eat it once they're returned to that part of the garden. I have to say, I have done this in the past and I actually ended up with um, several zucchini plants that produced a lot of zucchini for me. And I ended up having to kind of corral those or put fencing around them because I thought, you know what, this is a resource that I want to utilize. I don't want to let my girls kill, kill the plant. So you may find that you get an unexpected emergence in that part of your garden of something that you want and then you have to kind of protect it from from your flock but for me this has worked really well my old seeds permaculture principle produce no waste but old expired seeds or seeds i didn't like are not a waste they will be converted into chicken food and the chickens will convert the food that they eat into manure which adds nitrogen and increases the fertility in my garden so it's a great way to close that loop and it's a great way to use a resource that would otherwise be a waste product. Now, I think that it's important to have low expectations when you do this. You're using old seed, you don't know what the percentage of viable seed is in each packet, but whatever you get is going to be a bonus and an extra addition to your chicken's diet. So thank you for watching today. I hope that those two tips were helpful for you. I'm sorry there is so much chainsaw noise in the background. Nice sunny weather in Portland, Oregon is somewhat of a rarity um, until we hit the hot dry season in the summer. But um, 
it, it seems like if I'm gonna film out in the garden this time of year, there's going to be mowing, there's gonna be pressure washing, there's gonna be chainsaws, and that's just the way it is. And that's not gonna stop me from sharing with y'all. So thanks for hanging in there and I'll be back really soon. Don't forget to check out the ways down below that you can support the work of this channel. And if you have any tips or insights as to how you provide extra greens and treats for your poultry, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Okay, bye-bye.